Welcome everyone, this is our Wednesday Wisdom where we go over tips, tricks, and information on band instrument repair. Today we are doing things that involve hinge tubes. Hinge tubes. So this week's hashtag is going to be hinge tube. Make sure you take that and put it in the comments below to be entered into our week's drawing. The winner from last week, that was for a, a, a package of pad magic because we did a bunch of pad stuff. The winner is... Tavo Hidalgo. Tavo, send me an email. Congratulations, sir. Send me an email to rich, R-I-C-H, at musicmedic.com, and you will be, uh, I will get your address and all that, and we'll send you our free pack of Pad, Pad magic. magic. Pad Magic, there we Pad go. Magic. I was just thinking about uh, post-facing and fitting. Um, and also, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Uh, it really helps out the channel, and it helps us get the word out, and- The bell. The, oh, ah. And you click. always forget the bell, Rich. It's clear you have not clicked the bell. I, I yeah, I it's very I clear. Practice that. Yeah. Uh, click the bell so that you can be notified because we're a little early uh, on our stream today. So uh, I think that's about it. Oh wait, and then Ryan, where are we gonna be? Uh, we are gonna be in Baltimore, Maryland, on April eighth and 9th uh, at the Napert org conference their annual conference so go to napper.org and you can see all about the conference what other technicians are going to be there ryan's going to be giving a precision key fitting clinic there and so we're taking some tasty tidbits from his sneak preview sneaky preview type stuff for the next couple of uh streams so this week is hashtag hinge tube so put that hinge in the tube. comments below and uh you can win our prize and ryan we're going to be talking about facing and fitting a post facing, today facing facing and Fitting. And fitting. I don't know. This is the fitting, whatever face. Yeah, fit, yeah. Just tuck the thumb. Um, so we'll start with. Let me ask you this question, because um, I know the audience might want to know: is what's the purpose? Why do we even face and fit a post? What's uh, that? Is a great question. I was not prepared for. <laughs> Wow, uh, very insightful, Rich. No, it's, it's facing and fitting is one of the first stages of precision key fitting, uh, where you're prepping everything. You do this even before swedging. Okay. Okay. So this is one of the first things. The very first thing is you got to get your post aligned, general alignment. Then you do your facing and fitting, and then as you do that, you might have to kind of just tweak things. Uh, but what facing and fitting does, facing, and I'll do a drawing here in a, in a second. Okay. Uh, prepares the space in between post to post to be nice and per perpendicular to the hinge tube. Hey, we talked about hinge tubes. Yeah. Like, share, subscribe, put hinge tube right down here in the comments, uh, and click the bell. Unlike Rich, <laughs> please click the bell. Click the bell. Yeah, it, click it, click it takes a second. What, you guys don't have a second? Yeah, even it's less second. than a second. Yeah. It's like, bing, that's yeah. it. So facing and fitting. So facing prepares the, the space in between posts to be nice and perpendicular to your hinge tube. Uh, and fitting actually reduces the size of the hole in the post head to fit tighter around the rod. Okay, mm -hmm. so facing, fitting, and I keep saying that, we keep saying that in that order because that's the order you have to do it in. You have to face first, and then you fit. Okay. Facing, fitting, boom. <laughs> next question, Rich. <laughs> I well, might be prepared for this. Well, uh, I think my next question would be, would you like to show us how to face Absolutely. a post first? Absolutely. So let me show you what we got here. I'm working with the bottom stack of this, I believe this is an Alto, um, Super Action 80 Series 2 or whatever, cool. but I'm dealing with the bottom sections here of these posts. Oh, uh, actually, I'm sorry, let me do my drawings. Oh, yeah. Let's get, let's If it's let's good, get, yeah. we can save and put a bump on the bridge. So, I'm just going to draw a series of posts. Here's a post. There's a post. Everywhere is a post. It's our high technology right here. Hey. Here is our bottom or threaded post see the threads and these are all through posts okay. the very first thing we're going to do is like I said face the post so we're going to make sure that we have a nice perpendicular cut to how the rod goes in so we're going to use our, our hinge tube cutters we're going to face the post of the threaded post and then we're going to do either side of each through posts right there right there right there and even this one that's the very first one we can do a little bit of facing with that as well to kind of clean things up that one usually gets a lot of wear from the rod going in and out and in and out and maybe some of these screwdrivers a little too big or a little too small or who knows maybe it's just the right size but they're just messy with it okay so there we are so we're going to face them first okay gotcha. next thing we're going to do is fit them and this is when we're actually putting the rod in this 
opening right here, we're actually going to use our post fitting pliers and actually reduce the diameter of that hole just slightly so it's a lot tighter. Okay, when it's open like this, you can see a lot of movement. Okay, it's very noisy. Your key work is noisy and sloppy. Um, so we're just going to tighten that up on both sides. Okay. So there's my drawings. Very, very nice. Very, good. very yeah. nice, Ryan. Thanks, Rich. Yeah. That means a lot to me. <laughs> it really brought me up. Oh, good. On this gloomy yeah. Wednesday. That's right. It's oh, sorry, sorry. Wednesday it's wisdom. It's, a, Wednesday. It's, a, it's, it's okay. It's raining. Yeah, it it's got to be raining somewhere else in the That's world. Right. So here we are. Uh, let's go ahead and do some facing. Facing and fitting. Facing and fitting. I'm going to keep saying that. Facing first. Okay. I'm going to show you a couple of the, the tools that I use to do my facing, and they are our hinge tube cutters. Okay. And what I have here is a push cutter. You can see it right there against this nice dark black background. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah. Very so contrasting. there's our push cutter. This is a push cutter. Okay. So as I'm cutting, I'm pushing, and it's cutting. I have also the dual cutter, which on one side is a push and on the other side is a pull cut. Okay. Um, and then you can see I have the pilots in here. So the very first thing, I do start with my threaded post to do my facing, and I'm going to pick a pilot that is small enough to fit inside of that threaded post. You can see right there. Okay. Now I'm going to thread in my pilot rod. Now my pilot rod is as close to the diameter of the actual hinge tube, or sorry, the hinge rod that goes in the post. So I want a pilot that is as close to that as possible. If it's too small, it's going to give you some uneven cuts and it's going to be chattery. Uh, obviously, if it's too big, it's not going to fit in the post. So you got to pick one, the Goldilocks of pilot rods. Okay. So it's just right. That's, that leads me to my question, Ryan. Okay. Lay it on me. Why, why is the size of the pilot important in general? Yes, exactly. Yeah, it's very important, again, because you don't want that chattery. You don't want that, that cutter to move like this on the post. You just want it to rotate like this. You don't want it to moving around like that okay so I've got my rod threaded in here's my cutter and again like I said this is a push cut so I'm pushing slightly this way very so ever so slightly because it doesn't need a lot of pressure these are very sharp and I noticed that your pin vise that you've got the rod or the pilot the large dr driver pilot so to speak is it, is that like smaller you've it is I've, I've cut this down to get a little bit of, of clearance okay sometimes if it's too big kind of gets in the way of other posts, but yeah, I have my, my custom uh, pin Very nice, okay. So, so there we are, just a light push. You can see I'm just pushing with my finger over here as I just give it a couple turns. Um, what you'll see is a nice clean faced surface. It should be, I mean, you'll, you'll see it. If you have trouble seeing it, you can use a Sharpie bonus tip on this and you can actually cover the face of the post with Sharpie marks. Shout out to Sharpie. Shout out to yeah for can providing I, such. I mean, I mean, we need this, a look at, look at my, my my thing here. I, I got my my pocket full of Sharpie it's marks. It's hard to see the black on the it black. Is. It's but. hard to see that, but we shouldn't use black. I apologize for that earlier. You got like um, a half dozen. I do. I, I, I love these Sharpies. I, I yep. do not take my Sharpie. That's do not that's take right. my Sharpie. Rich, yeah. Rich, I'm looking at you. <laughs> Don't take my Sharpie. I'm putting it right here. Um, so you can use a Sharpie on the face of that post. And that'll give you a clear visual representation of how much you've taken off and whether or not it's actually been faced. A couple quick turns and you can see, there it is. We get real close, super close. Sharpie's gone. The Sharpie is gone. Wait, wait, oh, no, here's the Sharpie. The Sharpie mark's gone. Sharpie mark's so, gone. So that's a quick little tip. So I've done my very, um, my last post, my threaded post. Now I'm gonna move to the next post to it, uh, which is the through post. I'm going to switch cutters. I'm going to switch to my dual ended one and I'm going to start with a pull cut. And so Ryan, a through post does not have any threads. Correct. Correct. Gotcha. Yeah, I consider all these to be through posts. This one I just call that very first through post. So I'm going to use this on the pull cut. So you're pulling the okay. cutter towards yeah, I'm pulling that the way? cutter this way. Okay. In if I were to push it, it would do that. Okay. We don't Gotcha. Okay, we want to do it on the pull cut. You've noticed when I unscrew this and I switch to do the other side, so I did a pull cut first. I'm unscrewing my dual ended cutter. I'm now putting the small pilot into there. And I've, this pilot, this very small pilot on my dual ended, is the same diameter as my longer pilot rod, which is also the same diameter as the rod that I'm going to be fitting into. Now 
here I go to my push cut, a couple quick little rotations, and there we are. So you've done your push cut, you've done your pull, pull cut. cut. Yep, and you would continue all the way back and forth, all the way up until you get to this one right here. Um, and you can do this very first post, you can do a little bit of facing to it. A lot of times this post gets really kind of messed up because, you know, either the slot of the rod starts to spread like this and it starts to really open up and kind of wallow out that, that hole. Um, you can face it, you can fit it, you can fix it. Okay. You can yeah. fit it. Oh, you should use that as a tagline. Hey. If you can face it and you can fit it, you can fix it. Um, good. So, good one, right? Which is much better than my last motto, which was, well, we, I could fix it if I could find it. So... <laughs> had, a, had a problem with misplacing. I kid. So, so we face. Remember, facing first, fitting comes second. That's right. Okay. So now that we faced our post, we can now do our fitting. Okay. For that, I'm going to use the post fitting pliers. And there's a couple different types here. We have both the large and the small. And then we also have this right here, which is a special prototype. Oh boy. That we're working on. Yeah. Don't ask for this, folks. Oh boy. Stop asking. Oh stop, stop, stop looking at it. <laughs> Okay, stop don't, looking. You can't get this one, and we, we experiment with things don't here. Don't look at this. That's right, don't look at this. But rather than having a brass jaw, and we do this because this is the working side. The steel. This is the steel side is the working side. The other side, the reason why we did brass is so it would mar the brass posts. Oh, those are music medic pliers? They are. They oh, are cool. music I, medic pliers. You sweet. can buy them right here. Not these, though. These are mine. Gotcha. Stop gotcha. looking at them. Gotcha. But... But at musicmedic.com, yeah. you could get those. And you could get the, the hinge tube cutting tools as well. Absolutely. You okay. Here as well. I'm on there we are. Very nice. With my post fitting pliers. So let's go ahead and start now. I will say this you cannot use the post fitting pliers on your threaded post. Okay. If your rod, for whatever reason, the threads are loose in there, you have to do something else. Cut a new rod do some work on your on your threaded post, maybe reaming it, sleeving it, who knows? But you cannot use the post fitting pliers on a threaded post. You cannot use mm. post fitting pliers on a threaded post. Only a through post? Only a through post. Mm. Okay, only a through post. And it's, it's, it's just a little bit of movement in here. So okay. I'm gonna take the rod that I actually am going to use um, on the keys, we're gonna put it in. So this is the actual This is the rod. actual rod. Well, this is a test rod that I, that I kind of came up with quickly. Gotcha. But you're gonna feel a little bit of wiggle right here, okay? And it's because the hole in that post is much, much bigger than the rod. We need to find a way to kind of shrink it down and get that much, much tighter. That's right. So I'm gonna use this right here. And like I said, the working end is this ball side. So I'm gonna start with the, the side that is closest to the threaded post. Okay, so I'm going to start on this side right here, not this side, this side right here. So I'm going to put my ball end right in that hole like so. Now, here is the big trick when using these pliers. I call it the two-fingered method, or really two fingers and a thumb, okay, because that's how I grab this. this. I know it looks like you want to grab it like this, and you want to do your sledging, and you want to grab as hard as you can and squeeze that and shrink that ball down. That's not how this tool functions. Okay. okay? You need a rotation to really form that hole to be smaller and tighter. You're kind of putting a peen on the edge hmm. and it's bringing it in slightly, all right? So when I grab this and I go to use this, I use my two-fingered method or two fingers and a thumb method and I rotate it. It's very light pressure, all right? Because you can always do a little bit more, but if you get in there and squeeze like this, you're gonna do some damage to your post and maybe even to your pliers. Okay. So I did the rotation. I'm going to go ahead and put it in and feel still a little bit of movement. Let's go ahead and do it a little bit more. Yeah, I can hear that kind of tinking up yeah. against the post. So here we are. Here's my two-fingered method. So rotation. The most amount of rotation, the better. So we're doing, what, a quarter turn it Looks there? like I'm going to say like a turn? third. It's like a third of a turn. third of a turn. Okay. Yeah. So here we are just going back and forth. that in and that is much much tighter okay i'm going to do this side and then i'm going to do the other side the reason why i start with this bottom side first is maybe if i over peen or over switch that hole and it's tough for that rod to get in i can actually use that rod and kind of open it up and burnish it open a little bit okay. or bonus tip you can make one of these guys and i came in early to make this guy right here thank you uh you're welcome uh, i put in for overtime <laughs> So, okay. uh, but I am leaving early today, and you're paying me for the rest of the day. 
So, no, but I just took a, a piece of rod that is the same diameter as my hinge rod, which is also the same diameter as my pilot rod. And I just filed it down. So it has a, just a slight taper to it. And what I can do with this is I can put this in the hole and gently open up that side that's been maybe swedged out a little too much. Okay. okay so you're just opening it up slightly. You can see why you want to go slow and steady with these. Mm -hmm. You don't want to do too much. So you do that, and then you would go to the other side. And Again, you, the working side is the steel side. And you, and you can see why we wanted to have our uh, post parallel, okay, faces like this. Because if it's at an angle like this or an angle like this, our pair of pliers are going to be angled, which means when we peen, it could mean that that rod comes out at an angle, okay? Hmm. So facing and then fitting. Gotcha. Facing, fitting. Fitting, facing. Nope. Facing, fitting, fixing. There you go. Uh, I'm going to change there the title go. of the video to that. Yeah. Now, right. I will say with this pair of pliers and using the process of fitting, it works when there's just a little bit of movement. If there's too much movement, you have to do something else. Okay? A lot of people say this is a temporary fix. Um, it works when there's just a little bit of movement, rod movement in the post head. If there's quite a bit, you can do one of two things, and we're going to save this for a later video, which is either upsizing your hinge rod, mm. so making a larger rod that fits in there and takes up that, that slop, or you can do some work on your post where you actually drill it out and put in a sleeve that reduces the diameter so it's tighter around the rod. Yeah. So uh, you have one of those two. But if it's if on brand new horns, there's just a little bit of movement, even on older horns that have been around for a little while, there's just a little bit of movement. These post fitting pliers work fantastic. Cool. It's that little extra. If you don't do this and you do all your swedging, yeah, you may have tight key fitting, but it's that last little bit, that last, you know, two percent that these post fitting pliers are fantastic at. Okay, so you've you've done your precision facing. You've done your precision fitting. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to ask you about the pliers. You have sure. two sizes of pliers yes. there. What's the, you have, you've been using one, but there's another one there. Yes, yeah, so we have our large, and this is the diameter of the ball here, uh, and the, really the size of the jaws. Uh, and then I have the small. The small I use on, um, for saxophone, palm keys and side keys. So anything that has a smaller diameter or, or a tighter space, really, especially when you're working up here in the palm keys, where it's a very tight space. Um, so I would use the small for the palm keys, any smaller diameter rods. Uh, this also works great for flute and clarinet. Cool. Okay. okay. Uh, and then you have the large ones, which are great for all the other sizes of saxophone. Very good. All righty. Okay. Well, Ryan, thank you so much for You're that welcome. excellent demonstration. You are very welcome. Uh, that means a lot to me. Everybody, make sure that you take the hashtag hinge to put it in the comments below. You can be entered in for the drawing for next week. Tavo Hidalgo, make sure you send me an email. Everybody go to napert.org and you can read more about Ryan's clinic description, what he's going to be doing there. You can uh, have a chance to meet us and we'll uh, try out a lot of our tools. We'll have our, some of these. We'll try our tools. We'll have some new stuff there as well and we can have a chance to chat and meet and have a drink or, or uh, seven. Mary, <laughs> seven, I'm having at least seven, seven drinks. Seven drinks. Uh, next week's video is going to be how to counter bore a post. So that's going to be another chapter in the precision key fitting. Another little sneak uh, preview. That's right. So uh, check us out then. It's going to be the same time next week. Uh, and we'll see you then. Happier parent. And let's get cooking. <laughs> let's get cooking. <laughs>